Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy, and in this video, we're going to attempt to solve this equation right here. And uh, we would describe such an equation as a radical equation because this little square root sign in algebra is also known as a radical. So we want to solve the square root of 3x is equal to negative 7, and of course, we want to solve for the variable x. Now, I'm making a big statement here because I don't want you to make this very, very common error. And of course, we're going to find out if, in fact, you're going to make this error. So if you think you can solve this equation, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer. And if you don't have the correct answer, there's a good chance that you made this common error. But uh, no worries. I'm going to fully explain this so you totally understand. This is a really important uh, video for those of you out there that are uh, studying um, any sort of math course that involves algebra. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep, or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so the square root of 3x is equal to negative 7. Doesn't seem to be uh, that difficult. Uh, so what is the answer? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. Well, in fact, uh, there is no answer. Okay, so this is the answer. And you might be uh, looking at this and uh, saying to yourself, well, what does that mean? Okay, well, this uh, uh, symbol right here, it's a zero with a line through it, means a null, the null set. Effectively, what it means is there is no solution. So this is the correct answer. Now, if you got something else, I suspect... Uh, some of you out there got an actual value. We'll talk about this in a second because it's likely uh, the case that you made this common error uh, that uh, you know I'm talking about here. But if you got this right, that is excellent. Matter of fact, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you know how to check uh, for extraneous solutions and radical equations. And if you tell your friends and family that, they're going to be like, I have no uh, clue what you're talking about. It sounds pretty cool and very impressive. But anyways, that's the kind of the main idea of this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the problem here. And uh, again, we're dealing with a radical equation, right? The square root of 3x is equal to negative 7. You're going to need to know how to solve equations like this in algebra. So let's just talk about the general kind of steps here to solve such an equation. So in general, what you want to do when you're solving a radical equation, something that involves a square root, is we need to get rid of the square root, right? So we've got to get rid of this. And the way we're going to do that is by squaring both sides. I'm going to show you the work here in just one second. And when we square both sides, okay, uh, something that you have to keep in mind is what we call extraneous solutions, okay? Extraneous solutions. Now, what does that mean? Well, effectively, let me just kind of explain this to you because this is really kind of the main idea of this particular video. So let's suppose I have a lovely equation like this. X is equal to 2. So you're looking at this and you're like, well, that's not even an equation. That's just like some sort of solution. No, this is an equation. It's like the easiest equation uh, there is in the history of math, right? To solve this equation, what does x have to be if it's equal to 2? Well, of course, it's 2, right? So when you square both sides of an equation, okay? So in this case, if I square this and I square this, I'm going to end up with x squared is equal to 4, okay? Now, this right here is what type of an equation? This is what we call a quadratic equation. Let's go up and solve this right here x squared is equal to 4. So a quadratic equation will always have two solutions. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take the square root of both sides. So we're going to get x is equal to positive and negative 2. Okay, so x is equal to positive and negative 2, in fact, is the solution to this equation. However, we need to check uh, these solutions from this x squared is equal to 4 into our original equation. Okay, so our original equation is x is equal to 2. Okay, so this was our original equation. And what is the answer? Well, the uh, answer here is 2, okay, because 2 is equal to 2, not negative 2. Negative 2 is not equal to positive 2, right? So when we solve this equation, we squared both sides. We solved this equation. We got two solutions, one of which 
was correct. The other was just extraneous. In other words, it was just extra, and we can throw that out. So that can definitely happen when you're dealing with radical equations. Anytime you are squaring both sides of an equation or multiplying both sides of an equation with a variable, you need to be um, on alert for these extraneous solutions. And a lot of students don't fully understand what they are and how they can kind of uh, be derived. So uh, again, when you're solving radical equations, equations that involve square roots, the only way you know, uh, you know if you actually found an extraneous uh, solution is you have to uh, check all your answers into the original equation, okay? All right, so fair enough. Hopefully most of you out there are like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know all, I know all of this. <laughs> Just explain the problem. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the steps here. Okay, so here is the uh, equation. I'm gonna go ahead and square both sides, right? And of course, I know I'm thinking about extraneous solutions, but we'll deal with that at the end. So when I square both sides, I'm going to end up with what? 3x is equal to 49. Negative 7 squared is a positive 49. Negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. And then the square root of 3x, when we square that, basically uh, we just drop that square root and we have 3x. And then here, to solve this remaining equation, pretty straightforward. All I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 3. So x appears to be equal to 49 over 3. Now, if you got this as an answer, if you're like, no, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is the answer, well, I'm very happy that indeed, you know, you said this was the correct answer, okay? Now, you might be saying, you know, well, if it's the correct answer, why didn't you give me full credit for it? Well, because it's wrong. It is, in fact, not the solution. It's the solution to this equation. Let's kind of go back here and understand this again. When you squared both uh, sides of the equation, you cr created a new equation, okay? This uh, solution is, in fact, the solution to this linear equation, no doubt about that. However, it's not the solution to the original equation. Let's go back up here, kind of be able to stretch this out a bit. We're right up there, it's not, okay? Now, some of you might be saying, well, it is. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this because this is a very, very common uh, misunderstanding in algebra, okay? And I think that uh, a lot of textbooks don't do a good enough uh, job explaining this, so I'm gonna explain this now. Okay, so here, we're taking the square root of something and it's uh, supposed to be equal to negative seven, right? So let's just kind of stand back from the equation for a second. And I said, hey, uh, take the square root of some number, okay? Or you take the square root of some number and the answer is negative seven. Let's just make this easier right now. So let's take the square root of some number and the answer is seven, all right? So, you know, you're thinking about that, and you're like, all right, if I took the square root of some number and the answer is seven, you probably might, you know, think to yourself, well, is the answer, you know, 49? Well, in fact, you'd be right, right? So the square root of 49 is seven, okay? So uh, what's the square root of what number is gonna give us a negative seven? Well, if you're saying to yourself, well, could it be negative 49? Well, this is not correct, all right? Because this right here, is what we call an imaginary or complex uh, number. So we're not dealing with that. We're kind of sticking to the set of real numbers here. And I guess I can kind of be extra clear about that. So this is not the case because the answer here is what we call positive negative seven I, okay? It's not negative seven. So you might be saying, mm, well, how about, you know, isn't there two solutions uh, when you take the square root of a number like 16? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So let's take the square root of positive 16. Now, a lot of you are gonna say, well, it's four, and a lot of you are gonna say, well, it's uh, both four and negative four. And this is the crux of what I wanna talk about right here. Okay, so uh, four, right? So four times four is in fact positive 16, and negative four times negative four is in fact positive 16. So when we take the square root of 16, our answer could in fact be expressed as positive or negative, uh, positive negative four, okay? Just as I solved this quadratic equation way, way back up here, uh, well, I went too far. Anyways, is the one where I was just uh, solved x squared was equal to four, and we took the square root of both sides and x was equal to positive and negative two, okay? And this is where I'm going to make uh, something very clear to you. If you're paying attention, if you're still with me, you're gonna uh, understand you know, this common error. Okay, 
So let's kind of get to it right now. So in mathematics, okay, if I just ask you, what is the square root of 16? The answer you want to give is a positive value, just four, okay? This is what we call the principal square root, principal square root, okay? Uh, so the square root of 16 is positive four. We don't throw in the positive and negative four. Now, if I was um, solving a quadratic equation like x squared is equal to four, now, this is a quadratic equation. That's not this scenario. See, this scenario, I'm just asking you, what is the square root of 16? The answer is going to be expressed as the principal square root, 4, and only 4. And this uh, equation here, this is a quadratic equation. It's a second-degree polynomial. That means that there is going to be two solutions, okay? So when I take the square root of both sides, I need to put in that positive and negative root. So x will be equal to both positive and negative 2, okay? So you only have to use the positive and negative uh, when you're dealing with solving equations such as a quadratic equation, okay? Not just when you're taking the square root of a number. So when you're taking the square root of a number, it's just the positive version of it, something called the principal square root. And that is a little detail that is really not emphasized enough in my opinion, in most math textbooks, okay? So what ends up happening is most students, or uh, I would say uh, the most algebra students, if you said, hey, what's the square root of 16? They're gonna say both positive and negative four. And the reason why they're thinking that is, you know, if they're thinking of solving an equation like x squared is equal to 16, and they're thinking in terms of roots, okay? But that is not correct, and that can get you in major trouble here uh, when we solve or when we're checking for extraneous solutions. This is such a common uh, misunderstanding. But let's go ahead and clear this up now. Okay, so here is our original equation. We have the square root of 3x is equal to negative 7. And we solved this radical equation. We came up with x is equal to 49 over 3 as a possible solution. The only way we're going to know if it's a good solution is to plug it in uh, back into the original and see what we get. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to replace this x with 49 over 3, and we're going to simplify this and see if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and check that now. Okay, so here, what do we have? So 3 times 49 over 3. Of course, the 3's cross cancel, and we're left with the square root of 49 is equal to negative 7. So we're asking ourselves, is this true or false? Well, Again, right here, the square root of 49 is, you're thinking the principal of uh, square root, the uh, square root of 49 is positive 7, okay? Not negative 7, okay? So this is not true. This is false right here, okay? But a lot of students think, oh, they're thinking in terms of roots. Oh, the square root of 49 is equal to both positive and negative 7. Uh, so they're thinking, well, there's a negative here, so this must be true, all right? So if you confuse this, don't worry about it in terms of, don't feel bad about it, okay? Because so many students uh, confuse this, and it's not, in my opinion, emphasized enough. Extraneous uh, solutions, ex extraneous roots, principal square roots, these are these little tiny details that can really throw you off in algebra. Okay, so hopefully this kind of cleared up some confusion, and, uh, you know, you learned something here. Now, if you want to really learn algebra, uh, for me, um, my best instruction is going to be in my math courses. As a matter of fact, I'll leave all my math links to my direct math courses uh, in the description below. For this level of math, I would suggest checking out like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course, maybe uh, my pre-calculus course. all depends on what level of math you're in. You're typically not going to get into extraneous solutions in like uh, pre-algebra. But uh, again, you know, this is an error. Uh, an area that a lot of students confuse, and hopefully this video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.